Okay, here we're told we have a, a pump station that's used to fill a tank on a hill using water from a lake. We're told the flow rate in uh, the system and the pressure in the atmosphere is just a standard 101 kilopascals. The pump is located four meters above the lake surface and the tank surface is 115 meters above the pump. The suction and discharge lines are diameters are given and then we're also told it's commercial steel pipe and the equivalent length of the inlet line between the length and the pump is 100 meters so the length of this line is 100 meters. The total equivalent length between the lake and the tank is 2300 meters so this distance is 2300 meters including all fittings, bends, screens, and valves. So what they mean by equivalent length is of course you have the length of the pipe and that'll generate a major loss and then you have all these fittings, bends, screens, and valves that will cause additional minor losses so the equivalent length, the idea there is, imagine you replaced the fittings, bends, screens, and valves with an equivalent length of pipe that gives you the same major loss as the minor losses. So, so by saying that we're given an equivalent length of 2,300 meters here, it just means that that contain, when we calculate the major loss for that 2,300 meters, it has all of the minor losses sort of included inside of it. We're also told the overall efficiency of the pump and the motor and that we're dealing with water with those properties. So what is the net positive suction head available for this pump? So the net positive suction head available or NPSHA, that is a pipe system property. It's not a pump property, so it won't have anything to do with the pump. It's a, it's a pipe system property. And, excuse me for one second here, and uh, to find that, what we're going to do is apply the extended Bernoulli equation from point 0.1 here all the way up into the suction side of the pump. We'll call that point 0.2 there. We're going to apply that extended Bernoulli equation there. And what we'll do is we'll rewrite the extended Bernoulli equation so it looks like the definition for NPSH. So you'll see that how I do that in just a moment. So let's apply the extended Bernoulli equation. So we'll write it out. So there's our extended Bernoulli equation. Let's write down some of the things that we know. We know there is no um, shaft head between points one and two. So point one is there, there's point two. There's no pump or turbine or any rotating machinery between those two. There is a pump here, but it's downstream of point two, so it doesn't factor in. Remember, this is going from point one to point two, so there is no pump between those two points. So that's zero. Let's write down some of the other information we know. We know P1 course is the atmospheric pressure. It's the 101 kilopascals absolute. We'll say that um, point 0.2 is just the pressure right at the suction side of the pump. So I'm going to call it P sub S. It's the, the pressure at the suction side of the pump. We don't know the value of that. Um, but that, don't, that doesn't matter as you'll see in a little bit. V1 is about equal to zero because it's the surface of this large lake. V2 will be equal to Vs. It's just the velocity at the suction side of the pump. So again, we don't know the value of that, but we'll, we'll, um, we won't need to know it in just a little bit. You'll see. And then we have Z2 minus Z1 is the 4 meters. So that's just the elevation difference from here to there. Okay, so that's that. Um, the other thing, let's see, what other information are we given? Uh, we, we need to find the, the head loss between those two points, so let's write that out. Head loss, of course, will be the sum of all the minor loss coefficients times the velocity head values where those losses occur. And we're told in this problem that the equivalent length of the inlet line between the length of the pump is 100 meters. So, again, the idea here is we don't have to factor in the minor losses um, explicitly because they've already been embedded into the major loss by using an equivalent length. So this will just be F times L over D times V bar squared over 2G, where 
L is our equivalent length. Let me write that down. So L here is our 100 meters because we're only worried about the upstream part of the, the pipe system. It's only the part that's upstream of the pump. We're told the diameter is, where is the diameter in this? So uh, we're told the diameter is 10.2 centimeters. And we're also told that we're dealing with um, commercial steel pipe. I believe that was what we're told. Let's just double check that. Yeah, we're told that we're dealing with commercial steel pipe. So we can look up the roughness for commercial steel pipe. And if we do that, let me write that down here. So the commercial steel pipe roughness, we can look that up in a table. That comes out to be 0 0.045 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Again, that's for commercial steel. That just comes out of a table. We can calculate the, the Reynolds number um, as well. And I, I need that, that roughness and the Reynolds number to find the friction factor. By the way, let me just calculate the relative roughness. So we can find the relative roughness. That comes out to be 0 0.004. Oh, I think I missed a zero. 0004. The Reynolds number will be the average velocity in the pipe times the pipe diameter divided by the kinematic viscosity. To find the, velo the velocity, we have to use the volumetric flow rate. So the volumetric flow rate is the velocity times pi d squared over 4. We're given the volumetric flow rate, I believe. Let's go up here and take a look. Yeah, we're told the volumetric flow rate is 10.5 liters per second. So we can calculate the velocity from this. So the average velocity, when you plug in the numbers, what does that come out to be? That's um, 1.28 meters per second. And then we can calculate the Reynolds number. That comes out to be 131,000. And now that we have the Reynolds number, and by the way, you'll see that this, this Reynolds number puts us in the turbulent regime, which means that our kinetic energy correction factor at 0.2 is going to be equal to 1. But we now have the Reynolds number and we have the relative roughness so we can use the Moody plot to figure out what the friction factor is. And I, I'm not going to jump to the Moody plot. I'll just make a note here from Moody. Friction factor comes out to be 0 0.0195. So I'm assuming that you know how to read a Moody plot by this point. So we can get that friction factor. Okay, so we now have, I think, everything we need to solve, um, well, to, we have everything we know about the uh, extended, extended Bernoulli equation. So we have this equation here. Well, we still don't know this PS in the VS, but that's not going to matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation and, do, and rewrite it to make it look like the net positive suction head definition. So remember that net positive suction head is defined as the pressure head plus the velocity head on the suction side of the pump minus the vapor pressure head, right? And we can take our extended Bernoulli equation up here and rearrange it to kind of fit that definition. The point two, remember, is that's our like PS and our VS. Okay, so let me just rearrange that equation. So that'll look like uh, P1 over rho g plus our, our velocity term we can um, we don't have because remember v1 was equal to zero so that'll look like z1 minus z2 which we know that's given right here that's z2 minus z1 is four meters so this will actually be minus four meters we have our head loss term which we know because Head loss is given right here, and we know all of that information. We know the friction factor. We know the L. We know the D. We know the velocity. Of course, we know gravity. And then the only thing left is we have to put in the vapor pressure head because that shows up right here. So this part right there just comes from the extended Bernoulli equation related to that, where instead of an S, we put a 2 here. So that, this whole part that I'm circling, let me highlight it. All of this just comes from the extended Bernoulli equation. Okay? And 
in the extended Bernoulli equation, we just said that S was equal to 2. That, that's what we did right here. It's just on the suction side of the pump. And then we just subtracted out the vapor pressure head in both. So we have all of this information. We know P1 is 101 kilopascals absolute. We know the vapor pressure that was given right up here is uh, 1.82 kilopascals absolute. Just keep in mind that if, if, if this pressure is absolute, then this one has to be absolute. Or if this is gauge, this has to be gauge. You just have to be consistent. So we know everything in the problem. So when we plug in the numbers, we'll get the following. Uh, if you plugged in for the head loss, you'll get the head loss is 1.61 meters. And then when you plug everything in, I'm going to put, even though I called this NPSH, that's just the definition, I'm calculating the NPSHA, the, the available uh, net positive suction head. And this will come out to be 4.5 meters. So that's the net positive suction head available to the pump. It's four and a half meters. Okay. So we just want to make sure so that the in order for the pump to not cavitate, we want to make sure the net positive suction head required for the pump, which is a pump property, we want to make sure that that NPSHR is less than this NPSHA. We just want to make sure we have enough net positive suction heads so that the pump will not cavitate. Okay, so that's how you do your calculation for net positive suction head. It's just a pipe system property, and you apply just the extended Bernoulli equation to the suction side of the pump, rearrange the extended Bernoulli equation so that it looks like the definition of net positive suction head, and then, uh, and then you do your calculation, and you'll get the net positive suction head available. Okay, we'll go ahead and end it there.